Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. If you've seen my recent Art Miranda haul, you will have seen that I bought a few more Rosa Gallery paints. I bought all eight of their granulating mixes that they've recently come out with. I bought the gold and silver, which I'll not be swatching today because I'm still trying to figure out what I'm actually going to do with them. I don't really use metallics, but I thought they're so cheap. Might use them for Christmas cards or something, so they'll come later. And I also bought their um, quinacridone gold and paints grey because I was missing them in my collection, and I just just wanted to try them out. So before I've opened all of these, apart from the paints grey, because I just wanted to show you very quickly how I open these. They are perforated here. The these wrappers, sticky wrappers, they're perforated, so you can. Technically, you can just tear them off if you're careful. But what I like to do, I'll lift the flap and I'll go in here with a craft knife. And because it's already perforated, it doesn't really take much. You can even do it without lifting the flap. Look, I can show you from the other side. And then you can just, you can take this bit off and then you have these two flaps at the side, which give you the name and the internal their internal number and on the other side you have the light fast information how opaque it is and the pigment information so the paint spray is a mixture of pb15 colon 1 pb19 it's probably pb19 i think that's a typo and pbk7 i will write the pigment information of all these paints in the description below i didn't want to put them all on the paper here so but yeah let's get swatching i haven't as you can see i haven't pre-wet these because I generally find they don't need it. So we'll just see how they go. See, as I said, they don't need it. They are perfectly fine. And you just brush over them with a wet brush and you get plenty of pigment. There's a really nice Quinn Gold. I want to compare that to my real Quinn Gold. And I want to see if I can maybe mix something myself. I'll just put the paints on here. And I was going to read out the pigment information very quickly. It's PY151, PY42, and PY264. So it's not a usual mix that a lot of other brands use for their quinacrylate and gold use. So then there's the paints gray. Actually, really close. It's not all that different from their indigo, it seems, but it's a bit. I guess it's a bit less blue, a bit more gray leaning. And I think, I think that's what I want the paints gray for. I want to swap the indigo out. I'm not going to keep the indigo. So yeah, those are nice. They will come in useful, but now, now we get to the good bits. Now we get to the granulating colors, the new ones that they just recently came out with, like in, I don't know, March, April, maybe. So this is Golden Brown, which is a mixture of PY43 and PBR7. And so in general, I find the Rosa Gallery colors activate really quickly. I love this activated really nicely as well. I found their earth browns and yellows are the only ones that are sometimes a little bit need a little bit more time to activate but this actually came along quite nicely so maybe they fixed that maybe that's, these are different pigments because they are supposed to be a granulating mixture anyway let's get a bit more pigment in there and see it is really warm in here, so I don't, and this is um, cellulose paper and sketching on, uh, swatching on, so I don't know how heavily these will granulate with the weather and everything drying so much, but I'm gonna add a bit of water instead, so see how we, what we get. So then the next one is maroon brown, which is a mixture of PBR25 and PB23. There's 
a lovely colour. The PBR 25, I think, is the Royal Brown, which is also a lovely colour and one I would definitely suggest you get if you're into granulating colours. So let's add a bit more water in there to see what happens. Then we have magenta grey, which is PR122 and PG17. PG17 is chromium oxide green, isn't it? I think it is. So in there, in their mixes, not necessarily all the pigments that are in there are granulating pigments because the quinacridone magenta isn't really a granulating pigment, but chromium oxide green is. And because it's chromium oxide green, there's also a bit of opacity in there. It's a very opaque green. And then we have violet black, which is a three, three pigment mix of PV19, BB, PBK7 and PR108. Look at that, that's gorgeous. That is going to be great for my moons with night skies, actually. Oh, I can see the granulation in this happening now, though. Look at that. Nice. Very nice. Oh, that's a lovely color. Yeah, I can. This is definitely going to be a lot of use. I can already see that. That's brilliant. So, let's move this up a bit. So you can actually see what I'm swatching. Next we have Jade Green, which is a mixture of PB28, PBK7 and PY42. Interesting. I have to say I'm not the biggest fan of the Rosa Gallery Cobalt Blue PB28. Add some granulation, and this is a, this is actually a lovely green actually as well. So I think in mass tone, it gets very dark. So I might even use that for my moonscapes as well. Oh, you can see the granulation happening there. So there's lots of granulation. Very nice. Then we have Azure Green, which is a mix of PB15 colon 3 and PG17. So it's the chromium oxide green again with phthalo blue green shade. And that actually makes a lovely turquoise colour. Is almost a bit like my deep sea green, my faux deep sea green mixture with French ultramarine and phthalo green, only a bit more opaque, but it's a lovely green. So then we have cobalt grey, I'm really interested in this, it's going to be interesting to see. It's a mixture of PR108, PB28 and PBK7, so it's cobalt blue. No, cadmium red, cobalt blue, and is it? I can never remember what PBK7 is. Is it carbon black? No, that's PBK9. Is it lamp black? It might be lamp black, I can't remember. Oh, it's not as. Oh, maybe it is strong. Oh, that's a nice one though. I can see the granulation already happening. That might actually be a good moon color. If you wash it down in the wash, add a few craters and see. But that's a lovely color. Cool pan down. And then we have carbon.
Robin Black, which is a mixture of PBK7 and PY42. It's also a good night sky color. And a nice color for a moon if you maybe add a bit of French ultramarine or something like that. Or as an alternative to iron oxide black even maybe. watched out. Can you still see those two up there? But the stars of the show really are those granulating granulating colors and I see lots of granulation in the golden brown, the jade green, the cobalt gray and the carbon black and then it's a bit more subtle in the azure green, the maroon brown, the magenta gray even though you can see the, the separation. The maroon brown is not very granulating actually. Still a lovely color though. And the violet black. It's also the granulation is fairly subtle, but then it's the question is how much it will actually show up on this paper, especially when it's hot like it is today. And but these four are really, really nice. This one is not nice as well, granulation wise. And this it's subtle, but it's there. I have to I guess I have to play around with these on other papers. Well, I'm definitely not mad that I bought these. I bought these on Art Miranda in mid or end of April 2023, and they were about two euro thirty five or something like that per full pan. And the Rosa Gallery pans are two point five milliliters instead of three milliliters, like most full pans are. But still, you get a lot of paint for not very much money, so I'm not mad. And I think some of these, at least, the mixing possibilities are going to be quite good but yes i'm very excited to play around with these and see if i maybe need to adjust my rosa palette some more probably will which one of these is your favorite let me know in the comments and please give the video a like subscribe to my channel if you enjoy people playing around with their watercolors and i'll see you in the next one thank you very much for watching bye now bye